Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, I am back with a new video. This is second part of ecology. Now some questions that can come in exam are diagrammatic view. So this is one of the questions it talks about population growth curve. But growth curve is of two types. One you can say as capital A, other one is called as capital B. So how to find out what is capital A? So for capital A we need to understand that there is a straight formula it says dn by dt is equal to rn when you look at capital a graph you will see that it is showing the exponential growth where it has crossed the k what is k the carrying capacity so here the population size is given by n the birth rate of the population is given by b the death rate of the population is given by d so if i want to know whether there is increase or decrease in unit period that is time t so how we can calculate so we can say that t of dn by dt is given by now we need to understand one more thing that this growth curve has crossed the carrying capacity so the formula for this particular growth curve becomes what it becomes dn by dt is equal to b minus d into n now what is b minus d it is birth minus death rate so let us assume that b minus d is equal to r so what we can say therefore dn by dt is equal to r n this is how we calculate the formula for first alphabet a now the second one b but we look at the b curve we need to understand it is not crossing the carrying capacity. It is somewhere touching the carrying capacity but it is not crossing. It is representing a S shaped curve or a sigmoid curve. So what is this B formula? It is dn by dt is equal to rn the whole bracket k minus n upon k. This is basically representing a logistic growth where k is the carrying capacity. It means that the population size is not exceeding the carrying capacity. So what we can say a plot of n in relation to time t gives a sigmoid curve or S shaped curve. Now this growth is basically called as Verhulst Pearl Logistic Growth. When you talk about Verhulst Pearl basically these are the two scientists Verhulst and Raymond Pearl are the two scientists who came up with the concept of logistic growth. We need to understand again one more thing the K is the carrying capacity and N is the population density at time t. So this is how by looking at the graph you can calculate the increase or decrease in the population at a particular time. So hope you have understood this one of the concept of growth curve now let's try and understand the next question you might get questions something like this indicating species 1 species 2 plus minus 0 and they might ask you name the interaction first we need to understand whenever there is a plus it means it's a benefit one of the species is getting benefited if it is minus it means it is detrimental or we can say there is a loss means other species is suffering some kind of loss but if there is zero zero means what it's a neutral neither benefited nor getting lost look at the first one it says plus plus it means what both the species a and species b are getting benefited it means it is mutualism where both get benefit from each other look at the second one minus minus both these species are getting harmed it's a competition when it is one species getting benefited other species getting harmed it is called as predation where one species getting benefited other species getting harmed it is called as parasitism so the difference between predation and parasitism is in predation one will be killed but in parasitism both will survive in another case one is plus another one is neutral it is commensalism it means one gets benefited other neither gets benefited nor harmed but look at this one where one is getting harmed another one is neutral 
example this is called as amensalism when we talk about amensalism one of the example is penicillium growing on the bread and the penicillium produces some chemical to kill the bacteria on the bread but by the death of the bacteria penicillin is not getting benefited as well as it is not getting harmed whereas the bacteria are getting harmed this is one of the example of amensalism another example of amensalism is black walnut trees where it the trees the root of the trees releases a chemical called as juglon and it does not arouse any of the grass to grow around it let's see the next question now it's one of the most important question it is focusing on species area relationship and that too on a log scale relationship it becomes a linear so what we need to understand first first we need to understand that every species and the area they have a relation increase in area simply increases the number of species it's a mathematical relation there are some single type organisms also like plants they have all the vascular plants all the tropical plants so there is always a slope and elevation in the species area relationship graph now this was explored by one of the south american jungle we can say german naturalist and geographer alexander von humboldt he is the one who explained this species area relationship now region species richness increases with increasing explored area but only up to limit it means after a limit increase in the number of species will not increase the area so what we can understand there has to be a balance here between the immigration and the emigration it means the animal coming in the area and the animals living the area should have proper balance the rate and the magnitude of disturbance the prey and predator dynamics each and everything should be balanced if you want the species area relationship to be perfect clustering of a particular species will somewhere damage the species area relationship it simply means what the species area relationship follows second law of thermodynamics it talks about two things one is the sample another one is isolate now coming back to this topic the relation between the species richness basically so how rich that area will be in terms of species will be more for a wider area will be for more for a wide variety of taxa and the graph will be rectangular hyperbola so this is the first a where a stands for the graph showing the hyperbola curve it is s is equal to c a to the power z so this becomes our first whenever you see the curve kind of diagram just remember that it is s is equal to c a to the power z now what question comes here what is s what is c what is a and what is z s is the number of species c is the constant unit for measurement a is the habitat area and z slope of the species area relationship in log log space now let's see the second line which is a straight line log log scale line it was given by one of the scientist in the name of henry glisson what is said if i put like s is equal to log of c a to the power z so log s will be equal to log c plus z log a so you need to understand here this describes the second equation where s species richness a is the area z becomes the slope of the line and slope of the line is basically it's a regression coefficient when i talk about c c is nothing but it's a y intercept that is what we need to understand here so y intercept will be constant it's a unit for measurement now some questions that are very much important with respect to neat exam they can directly ask the value of z so what we can say if we can say with respect to an example that in case of taxonomic group or region basically regardless 
z lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 it means the regression coefficient mostly it lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 regardless of taxonomic group or region species area relationship among large area like entire continent the slope is much steeper where the z value will range from 0.6 to 1.2 for frugivores and mammals in tropical forest the z value is somewhere around 1.15 so this z value you should remember for your neat exam so remember normally it is 0.1 to 0.2 in large area it is 0.6 to 1.2 and for frugivores and mammals in tropical forest it is 1.15 now let's try and understand the next question that can be asked in neat exam so this is a representation of global biodiversity three diagrams one first circle when you take a look bigger area is empty so three fourth is free and one fourth is occupied so these are invertebrates but when you look at the second one half area occupied is a vertebrates and in plants you can make out the difference so with respect to invertebrates we need to say that this phylum which has large number of insect in invertebrate is phylum arthropoda so we can say that the larger one a portion is insect which has all the phylum arthropoda as animals when you talk about b second largest one it is mollusca all the snails and the c part includes the crustaceans and in d there will be other so when i'm shading it it is just simplifying mollusca when you talk about c it is crustaceans with a hard shell and the last one it's d which talks about others look at the second circle where half circle is fully occupied by one particular species it means our earth is having 70% water so majority of the animals will be living in water so the a is the major one it talks about all the fishes why fishes we can say 70% of the earth is water second we have mammals the third we have birds fourth we have reptiles and the last what we have is the amphibians amphibians are less in number or i can say least in numbers so it is fishes mammals birds reptiles and amphibians so this is how you can remember this diagram when you talk about the plants with the bigger area is a and b so when i talk about my right side of this it is angiosperm most evolved plants the left side talks about fungi so the most major part which is occupied by the plants it is angiosperms and the fungi in my next video friends i will be uploading numericals related to ecology if you have liked the video give a like and thank you very much